still stands on who he says he is and what he believes. Because God always sees something within us that we don't see in ourselves. So I love how he says this. He says, my people who are called by my name. His name is above all names. That name Jesus is above all names. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. His name. If I'm not mistaken, didn't it say that every knee will bow yes. and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Say it again, that Jesus is Lord. We know this. We know this. So, how God helped me to do this, we're going to break this down. He gave me four steps to share with y'all. Four steps. Simple. Go to the next slide. First step, humble yourself. Humble yourself. The definition of humble is to contrail or contail or to destroy the pride of humanity. Humility, sorry. To cause, I mean to cause to be meek or modest in the spirit. And then he gave me this scripture. He says, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God so that so that at the proper time he may exalt you. A lot of us mess this up at the beginning. God has called us to humble ourselves in all of our situations that we're dealing with. Humble ourselves to understanding and knowing that he is God. Because if we humble ourselves and understand that I may not know this, I cannot operate in this, I cannot do this, but I'm going to humble myself to you and your word and go by what it says. I know I'm going to be attacked. I know people are going, my sister, I know they're going to challenge me. They're going to try to humiliate me because I'm humbling myself to not fight fire with fire. I'm humbling myself to say I'm going to do what God has called me to do. I'm humbling myself in these situations because I know who I was, BC. But since I've given my life to Christ, I am not BC no more. Because before I knew Christ, I would do things that is out of the will of Christ. That is out of the will of what God has called me to do because I didn't have the recognition of it. I didn't know who I was. But now that we are all, you all rose your hands, we all rose our hands, we are all believers. The word of God says first, my people must humble themselves. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We are not on our time. We are on God's time. So we are to humble ourselves in all situations because we are on His time. It says, so, it says, God, so that at the proper time, He may exalt you. He, which is Him, He's going to exalt us. Not us exalt ourselves. Sometimes we think we know it all. Sometimes we think, well, I got some word in me, so I don't have to read no more. I heard what pastor and what the leaders and what apostle and the prophet said to me, and I needed it at that time. But thank you for telling me that. So later on, I, I, I guess I don't need it no more. And then you go through a whole week, go through a whole week of headache. Frustration, depression, issues, and problem. Why? Because we didn't continue to put it into practice. Continue to dissect it. Continue to use the word every single day. I may have been good today, God, but I don't know what's for tomorrow. So tomorrow, God, I'm going to speak that word that was given to me on my day today. And I'm going to humble myself to make sure that I can do it because of you and not me. Understand it. So God says, us. First thing I need my people to do is humble themselves. Humble themselves. You know, you know what stops people from humbling themselves? Pride. Pride. Pride will destroy you. Pride will have you walking into something and acting like something that is totally not you. And you won't even recognize it because you're too busy trying to stand and act like you're a Christian. But you're still operating in hate. Still operating in unforgiveness. 
still operating and everything else. How can we do that if God called us to be released from that? We can't expect to be released from something if we continue to hold on to something. To release means to let go. Yes. Let go. Go to the next slide. God, you just needed that. The next one says, pray. First thing was what? Everybody? We got it, right? Second thing, pray. Pray. Definition of prayer. Uh, pray is to utter or address a prayer or prayers to God. The act of making a reverent petition to God. Another object of worship. Give me the scripture. It says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Prayer is one of the most powerful and most needed thing that we have to do on a daily basis. We have to pray in the morning, pray at night, pray through situations, pray when we don't feel like praying, pray when we do feel like praying, pray for others. We have to pray, pray, pray. Pray is what moves God. How can we expect God to move if we ain't praying? Say that again. How could you expect God to move on your situation? How could you expect God to move on your issues, your problems, your addictions if you're not praying? Amen. Amen. We have to understand that prayer is, a, is an object, is another <coughs> object of worship. How many of y'all actually take time out of the day to really pray? 